You're such an asshole. Hello, children. That's the chef. Hello, children. Not the three dog. I explained that to you guys. Uh, we got a kind of a more, I guess, serious question. So I'll try not to curse because it's uh, <clears throat> it'll be germane to other people. And I hate Mark Dayton. Uh, last time I asked you for your assistance was two years ago. And you gave me very good advice. Truth is usually pretty good. Uh, today, I have another question I want to ask. So if you could tell me the cost, that would be great. My question is, if I am financially okay, and if I want to start a family with at least one child, what mistakes should I avoid that typically, that typically cause problematic spoiled children? Uh, well, divorce would be one of those. Don't don't get divorced. Don't have a kid out of wedlock. That would be kind of like, um, don't outsource your kid to daycare. Um, spend time with your kids. And this is, <clears throat> I know everyone likes to pick on single moms, but uh, and, and there's legit criticism there too. Uh, but man, you men, even if I've, I've, I've never seen it, never seen it. Well, okay, I have seen it. It's been very rare. Where fathers actually sit their children down and teach them things. I've not seen it in my childhood, in childhood friends and all that, where your dad would sit you down like, this is important, and that there was no game plan. There was no coaching. None. Which is largely why I make a lot of money now. Because <clears throat> whether you're married or divorced or you found it, you guys don't raise your kids. Oh, well, well, that's it. That's every dad now. Well, well. Every millennial and Gen Z father out there. <clears throat> so invest in your children. Raise them. Spend time with them. Tell them no. Give them a plan. Hey, you're going to major in... I can't mention it. You're going to major in this not specifically this, but you're you're definitely not majoring in these things, and I'm not paying for your college degree for a degree in art history. Here's background to my questions. I learned from my parents. I have uh, Chinese immigrant parents. I was born and been in Canada all my life. Our family grew up financially stressed, so they had more kids than they. Another thing, just little cappy advice here: if you don't want to spoil or ruin your kids. Make sure you can afford them before having them. I know that goes against the American way, even though you're Canadian. But make sure you can afford them. Not spoil them, afford them. I watch them work every single day from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., never taking a day off in 20 years. And the explanations my parents gave me were there's no other option. Well, you could not have kids. Would have been a lot easier. <laughs> the impression I got growing up was you work or you die. Well, that's true because if you don't work, you know, if, if enough people don't work, there won't be enough food uh, or housing or other things we like, like you know, water. <clears throat> so, yes, in a, in a uh, microeconomic sense, on the individual sense, you must work or you will die. That's how it works. Um, if you are sick, it means you are not dead. So you keep working so that your family doesn't die. You know, I'd like to meet your parents. They sound like really good. They actually sound like loving parents. In hindsight, as an adult, I think this may might have been an exaggeration, but it's the impression I got between elementary school until I got to my first engineering job 20 years later. Where I am today, I graduated from engineering in 2004, worked at corporate for a few years in IT, freelance since 2008 as a software developer. I've been doing okay, paid off my parents' debt. <laughs> Dude, I love you immigrants. I mean, I know you're going to Canada, but I love it. You all come over here. Your, your parents have more kids than they can afford. They bring you up in poverty. And then like, are you going to take care of us? And I know it's a cultural difference, but it's, and it's all of Asia, all of the Mideast, some of Africa, some of uh, Caribbean culture, could we call it? Not necessarily South America, not Japan or Korea, and not Russia. But everywhere else, like, oh, I carried you into this world. And then we sat on our ass and did nothing. Pay, pay us. We brought you into poverty. And we couldn't spend time with you. Now, don't you love your mother? <clears throat> I, I will never help my parents. Never. <clears throat> Bought a house, paid off the mortgage. I have no debt. I have 350k Canadian uh, across diversified assets. I have an annual income of over 100,000. My annual expenses is about 15k. The 15k is a little bit there. It's because I have no debt or mortgage. 
and my hobbies and interest cost zero. I like coding software for people. Dude, that's great. You enjoy it. Like I, I envy you because like normally people would find that boring, but if you enjoy it, that's how you, not only is it, it's not a taxing career if you like that. I like training boxers and martial artists part-time. I like playing my guitar. There you go. Good for you. Uh, I'm concerned that if I choose to find someone to marry and if I have children, my children might be born into a comfortable environment because I no longer have genuine slash legitimate complaints about life, pain, stress, etc. My children will never have an opportunity to witness how do adults endure do or die situations the same way I had to watch my parents struggle, which is shaped by my ability to focus and my work ethics. As such, my children may grow up weak, spoiled, and pathetic because they know I can provide a financial safety net my parents never had. I don't think I'm rich, but I think I fall into the same traps as families that are financially well off. Right. Now, another thing to consider, you are you make an adequate enough income that you could spoil your kids with cash. But what I've seen, certainly in banking and watching other people do, people make 100000 and then they borrow Three hundred, like your added income allows you to borrow a lot more purchasing power, and that's what I saw. One couple, they made over three hundred thousand combined, and they still filed for bankruptcy. I'm like, how do you, dude? I made three hundred grand one year. You be gone. I, uh, so I, you just don't have to borrow the money, but you do have enough cash to spoil them. Uh, certainly, if you only have an only child. Uh, do you have any advice on how to not raise weak, pathetic, spoiled children where parents have some money? What have you seen work in other families and parents, or what mistakes do you see that you could, you feel could easily have been avoided? <clears throat> you can reply in email or video whenever it's convenient for you. If you give a public response, you can keep my identity, and I, and I did. Okay. Here. Let's go. With it. Do you have any how not to raise weak, pathetic? Spoiled children, that's different. Spoiled children, weak, pathetic children. We have I seen work. Um, let's talk about the finances because your primary concern about them being spoiled and soft. There was never a point in my life uh, after the age of three that I really wanted to have children. I would only academically think about it. And all I academically think about way, if I were to have children, which I don't want to have children, uh, I would never tell them I had money if I did. And I've had a couple clients who are very rich, very well off. Very One guy was just like uber mensch. Like, I can't say what, but I'll, I'll tell you this. He was a surgeon, and then he was something even cooler than a surgeon. And you're like, wow. And uh, the problem he faced, he couldn't find a girl that didn't want him for his money. I say, well, what, what do you drive? He says, well, I have like three classic cars. <laughs> okay. Where do you live? Oh, I live in the penthouse suite of the fanciest place. I'm like, all right. Did they know you're a surgeon? Yeah. So just like when you're dating, you don't want to tell women you got money. When you're raising your kids, you don't want them thinking you got money. Because even, <clears throat> let's say you're very miserly, even stingy, not frugal, stingy. And you're a penny pincher. Your kids know like, oh, dad's loaded. Dad's got like, oh, we live in this fancy $5 million house and dad makes a lot of money. And so all I got to do is wait till dad dies. So even if you uh, don't give them money, they know dad's got money. And then you also have to worry about the wife giving them money. I've seen that happen too before where the dad's like trying to crack down on the kids and the wife, well, they need money. Yeah, my dad just gave me money and then, then you just gave me money and then the government can just give them money. Yeah, it'll turn out all right. <clears throat> so they cannot know that, they, that you got money. And that's how if I were to ever have kids and I was ever making money, I was like, you know, let's say I was a surgeon, all right? I would get a locker at the hospital wherever I worked with my my white overalls or whatever they were in the stethoscope. And I would have a blue jumpsuit to make it look like I was a mechanic, have Aaron written on there. And I get it all greased up and I'd have my greasy hat. Oh yeah. And and I would I would play like, oh we can't, oh no. Gosh, I'd even be half tempted, like if I were to get married, I'd I'd act that around my wife. Oh yeah, I'm a mechanic. I'm definitely not a surgeon. No, you can't come to the office. It's a little bit harder to hide it from your wife than your kids. But you don't tell your kids you got money. And if you pick the right woman, you're like, look, here's the deal. <clears throat> I make a lot of money. She might even make a lot of money. We don't tell our kids we make a lot of money. 
they're going to grow up. I wouldn't say poor or destitute, but definitely lower middle income. Sorry, kids, just not in it. Well, if you want, go collect some cans. You want, go shovel some, some driveways and some sidewalks. If you want, go rake some yards. Okay, look, I'll buy you the rake, but you got to go. You got to go and do that. I want, I want, I want a 20% commission. <clears throat> you put them in the position that your parents were in, but nowhere near as hard. You do not put life on easy mode. And it's simple. You just don't let them know that you got money. You don't let them know what you do. And you got to have a real good partner with you, your wife, make sure she's on the same page. And then you present this front to the children that you're, you're not poor, but you're not well off and you love them. And you teach them the value of a dollar, which is American dollars, way more valuable than Canadian dollars. You have to teach them first the value of the Canadian dollars, but the real dollars are south of us. So I'm like, really? America? Yes, son. <clears throat> wow, a real dollar. I'm kidding. Um, and, you know, well, you know, one or two or three years old, they don't know what's going on. Three, they probably will know what's going on. But four or five, when they want things, sorry, kid, we don't got it. I'm not saying, now, don't do what my folks did. Here's some socks. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, they thought, so. here's a sweater. Oh, yeah, that's just why I didn't want toys or nothing. Uh, you, you get them one good toy. You know, you let them have a child. You got to get them bikes, okay? You got to get them bikes so they could go bike around, right? So that's kind of like kids' cars. You get them, you know, baseball and so they play sports or whatever. And, dude, then you avoid a huge problem. No social media, no smartphones. You know, you got a flip phone. And you, no tablets, no tablets. You got the desktop computer. That's all they can afford. And, um, yeah, man, you, you do not let them know you got money. And what I had in my mind that if I were to have, then at the age of 30, and I'd let my kids be. Like, oh, here's a little bit of help for some food, son. Here's a little bit of insurance money. All right, I can't, you know. Oh, they cut our hours at the factory, kid. Then the kid, you know, daughter or son, has to go and become an actual real-world adult, which is an incredibly rare thing nowadays. <clears throat> they join the military. They work actually in a factory. And meanwhile, you know, hey, Dad, can I work at your factory? Um, uh, no, <laughs> you can't. And then they will either sink or swim. And usually because people don't want to die, they will swim. Or, you know, birds push their little children out, then they fly because they're going to die if they don't. And we need to do that to children all the time here in the United States, children, I mean, young adults. <clears throat> and then they'll work hard and they'll, and they'll sharpen, they'll hone, they'll be galvanized, they'll be independent adults, they'll be responsible. You just got to let the threat of starvation and poverty and hunger and cold do that. And then they'll be independent, self-supporting, reliable adults. And then 30, maybe more like 35 Hey, son, come on over here. Remember I told you I worked over at the, the cardboard factory? Yeah, Dad. And we acted like we were the Bundys from Married with Children? Yeah, Dad. That was all a lie. i am uh, been, you know, resident brain surgeon at, you know, Johnson Hospital for the past 30 years that you've been alive. And blah, 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 blah. And here's $2 million. The, <clears throat> you will have brought up an adult, you will have not spoiled them, and you will have created an adult that knows how to handle money. So that when you give them 2.5 million, they'll be like, what? And and I think, you know, that was just theoretically in my mind, probably the best way to raise a child, to make sure they know what to do with money, to make sure they don't need the money. And then you give them the money, and but you also gave them a good childhood. You didn't, you loved them, you spent time with them, you invested in them, you taught them things. <laughs> <clears throat> you didn't buy them effing sweaters for Christmas. You got them the occasional nice toy. You made it so they had a good childhood. You taught them that the most important thing was relationships and friends and fun and life and family. Then, oh, by the way, you know, I see, and that's the other thing. You got to figure out what the other age of the kids are too. Like, so if you have multiple kids, if that person's 35, you're like, well, the other one's 32. Well, you better, I guess you got to break it to them both at the same time. Oh, yeah, by the way, here's your 2.5 million. Here's your 2.5 million. We're insanely wealthy. We just want to make sure your kids could do it on your own. And I don't know if they'd hate you or appreciate you, love you more, but they would be way better off. Then take all across the spoiled spectrum. 
trust fund babies from the suburbs who had mommy and daddy pay for everything, like the Daytons. That's who's the the, the picture. Look at Mark Dayton. He's the governor, and his great grandfather started Target Corporation. Uh, or even uh, though nowhere near on the per capita spending, where the government bails people out, and the government is your sugar daddy, and like, oh, I'm entitled to everything. No one actually has to work. Uh, your children will not grow up spoiled and weak. They'll grow up, I wouldn't say hardened, but tough and strong and truly independent. Um, what have I seen <clears throat> work with other families? I, I don't know why I've seen work. All I've seen is parents spoil their children rotten and the kids F up. Not to sound, you know, braggadocio. I'm without a doubt the most independent person I know uh, within the people I know personally within my, all my friends, all my like, I'm like, no, I'm the, no, <laughs> you need your dad to pay for your car. You, your dad bailed you out of your worthless degree and transferred to another school. You, you lived at home and that, that, that I like, no, no one even comes close. I know people on the internet who came from worse back, like Ed Lattimore is a perfect example. Um, I actually, I take that back. I do know some military buddies who they, they didn't come from good. They didn't have it exactly handed to them. <clears throat> but what's great about all the people that were independent and had to do it and did not get it is if they made it and didn't just like, oh, the government owes me money, boo -hoo -hoo, they became really amazing, interesting people. Very interesting people. Adam Pig, it would be one. He, he didn't have a bad childhood. He, he just didn't have it. it pampered. He had to do things on his own. Sterling Cooper is another example. Um, the uh, prawn star, uh, he had an interesting uh, background. They all turn out, and every guy who, who not only comes from a disadvantaged background, but those who come from disadvantaged backgrounds and make it on their own uh, to whatever form of success they have, they all become a very interesting form of a diamond. A very, a, their own eclectic weird diamond. I mean, there's some, it's, 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 it's the scope. You know, you got a boxer in Ed Lattimore. You got a prawn star with Sterling Cooper. You got an author, ballroom dancing freak like me. They're all kind of, in, and I think that's another benefit you might find with the children is they're going to be, they're definitely going to become their own people. They're definitely going to be interesting. I think that's one of the, one of the finest luxuries of life is being a, a, a different person, not just some schlep that lo watches TV and, oh, the orange is the new black, the games of the pointy chair show. Oh, what did what did Tina Fey tweet? Oh, she's so witty for an old boomer chick. So that's it. All right. Any super chats today? Osama Abdu. Five bucks. AC, what is the price range for a sponsored video request? And how was your expression experience you mean at the conference in Las Vegas? Um, <clears throat> the video request, it, it depends. Uh, a sponsor video request. Like if you have a script, it usually isn't that much, like maybe 30 bucks. Like if you want me to say something specific and you have it written. Uh, but if, if um, or you mean like a sponsor for a product, usually I charge a hundred bucks a month. Um, and that gets you a, me doing the, the YouTube video on it. And then I mentioned it in the podcast, which I haven't, I owe a lot of, I got, I haven't done podcasting in a while. Uh, so a lot of, uh, sponsors, I got to do some free advertising for the next couple of months. But uh, uh, if it's a specific video, it really depends on time. Like, you know, oh, we'll do a video reaction. Those take a lot of money and time because I have to add, you know, comment on it. Uh, but send it to me. I'll, I'll give you a price quote. Juan the Aztec Patriarch. Speaking of good fathers, two bucks. Great advice. It's hard work to raise kids, though. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> Look. If raising kids was easy, then single moms wouldn't need all the government money in the world to raise them. See, it should be an indication raising children is hard. So if you try to do it by yourself, all those trillions of dollars we spend. Yeah, it's, it's, kids are difficult to raise to the order of trillions of dollars. All right, there you go. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.